Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to topic two in our database class. In this video, part three, I'm going to provide an introduction to database keys. Let's get started. Now, a key is a column or a combination of two or more columns inside of a relation or inside of a table. And the idea is that we are going to use the values stored in that column as the basis for identifying a row. We are already familiar with these. We may not realize it, but we are already familiar with this concept. Let's imagine, for example, that we have a simple table. I'll use my employee table again. And I'm going to be writing it out here in the form of a spreadsheet. So let's imagine that we have an employee ID, and a name, phone number, and a department ID. So we're just going to record some information about our employees, right? So maybe we have, I don't know, three employees. And as you know, by now, I like to use short names because it's hard to write things. So I use, I don't know, Dan and. Um, and just for the sake of diversity, we'll put E in there, okay? And then whatever our phone numbers are, blah, 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 phone number. And then maybe we have some departments. And 101. Now, in terms of keys, we would say that this column and this column are keys, are key columns within our employee table. So you can tell that we're using employee IDs to uniquely identify each employee. Right? So each of these values will be unique for every employee. That is, I'm not going to have two employees that have an employee ID of one. It doesn't make any sense. I want them to be separate so that I can use this column to uniquely identify each employee. And right? I want them to each have a different employee ID, the idea here. But I also have this type of key department ID. And you can see here that we have some repeating values. And in this case, we would take this to mean that both Dan and Yi work in the same department, whatever 101 is. Maybe it's the accounting department. So in this column, we're using the values to identify a set of rows. Maybe the departments in which each employee works. Okay. So here are my two employees that work in the accounting department, department number 101. Okay, so I'm using department ID to identify this set of two rows. But in the context of employee ID, that is being used to identify just one row within the table because every value of employee ID will be unique. Right? Every employee has their own employee ID. Okay. So we have two different types of keys here. And broadly, we can talk about these in terms of their uniqueness. A unique key, as we saw in that previous example, is one in which the specific value in the column is unique for every single row within the table. So if you're thinking of like an employee ID, every single employee ID will be unique. It will never be repeated within that table. And because of that, we can use the value of the key to uniquely identify a row. So these things happen all the time. We have things like employee IDs. At the university, we use a campus-wide ID, right? So each of you has a campus-wide ID, so do I, so do other faculty, staff, administrators. Everybody has a campus-wide ID. It doesn't matter what role you are. As long as you're a human being associated with the university, you have one and it's unique, right? Nobody else at the university has the same campus-wide ID as you, and no one has ever had it before, right? It's unique. So we can use that number as a basis for uniquely identifying you as a human being, even if there are other people at the university that have exactly the same name as you. And this highlights why we like to use these keys, because things like names, don't serve very well to uniquely identify people. Most of us have, there are other humans in the world that have exactly the same name as us. So 
we can't then use our name to uniquely identify ourselves among all the humans around. We need something else to do it. So in the database world, we're going to use some sort of unique key for that purpose so that we have a way of uniquely identifying every row. Like we want to uniquely identify every person or uniquely identify every product. So we'll create a unique key to identify them. Now we can contrast these unique keys with non-unique keys. This was like the example that we just saw where multiple employees have the same department. So in this case, the value that's stored in a non-unique key column may be shared or repeated among several different rows. And in that case, in the context of a non-unique key, the value can be used to identify a set of rows rather than just one unique row. So for example, this employee table that I was referring to previously, now we can see that department ID is a non-unique key because it allows repeating values and hence gives us the ability to identify a set of rows. Like in this case, I can identify the set of employees that work in department number 101. And we now know that employee ID is a unique key because its values will individually identify just one specific, one unique row within that table. So unique versus non-unique keys. Returning to our sample relation from before, we can now look at this and understand that it's very likely that employee number here is serving as a unique key in this relation. Right. And the interesting thing about this is it guarantees uniqueness for every row. So remember how when we were looking at the requirements for a table to qualify as a relation, one of them was that each row must be unique within the table, by which we mean there must be something about the combination of values that together comprise a row that needs to be unique. Okay. So let's say, just for the sake of illustrating this point, that uh, I have another employee here in my employee relation that happens to have exactly the same name as another one of my employees. So we can now see that these two employees here and here have exactly the same name. Now, doing something like this, 104, would not be allowed because again, we're not allowed to have duplicate rows. And in this case, this row here with an employee ID number of 104 and the employee's name is Yi Chang is exactly the same as this row here. So that's not allowed, right? We can't do that. However, we have previously established that in this scenario, employee number is a unique key. And that means that every single value in this column must be unique. It cannot be repeated within the table. So based on this, we know then that there will be some sort of different employee number for our new employee here, maybe an 03. And this is perfectly acceptable. This is fine because there is something now about this row that differentiates it from this row. They are not exact duplicates of each other anymore. And so what we can learn from this is that we often use these unique keys as a simple tool for guaranteeing that every row will be unique. Right? If I know that each of the numbers in this column, each employee number, will be different from every other number in this column, then I can simultaneously guarantee that every row in the entire table is somehow different 
from every other row in the entire table. Even if we have duplicates among subsets of other data, right? Like the first and last names here are identical, but the row as a whole is not. These rows are unique amongst themselves. So these unique keys can be very useful for us 